Thank you very much. And uh, I liked when he said the audience can slip, and he didn't say the speaker can sleep. So I like that, you know. Did you all have some food? Oh, I think next time onwards you should have it. Did you all have some food? Yeah, because I didn't have food. I was about to have, and then he called me saying, rush, rush, rush. Thank you, Kumar, and thank you, REI, for giving me this opportunity to talk on future of retail. It's a very difficult task, especially when I saw the morning speakers and the list of people who are there, the people who are really driving the business, driving this country, and driving the future. So I don't want to say that I want to talk on the future of retail, because it would be very unfair for me. But what I thought is, what if I talk about reality to opportunity? I know that will be all real and we can really, really connect to. So, so to me, the first reality is that India, Indian consumers, Indian consumption and Indian retail is probably the biggest, biggest opportunity. I think all of you will agree with me. People talk about India, people talk about Bharat, people talk of 1.3 billion population, people talk of a trillion uh, dollar happening in retail. I'm told it's about 780, 800 million. 800 billion. So that's the first opportunity. And, and I think we have never, never, never clapped for our consumers who really make us survive today. Isn't it time for that? Yeah. The next reality, in my opinion, brick and mortar is a reality. Omnichannel is the opportunity. The reason I'm saying it, and nobody can defy this, every person who spoke in the morning today, Every person who's going to speak in the next one day is going to talk to you about how they opened 500 stores, 300 stores, 1,000 stores, 5,000 stores. So if brick and mortar is not the reality, then why would they open stores? But if you go around the conference, 90% of the people who are there in the stores are all techies and technology and products which are going to help us in terms of services and in terms of what we can do better for our customers. So that is the opportunity. So if anybody feels that we can just be brick and mortar and not look at that opportunity, I think we are fooling ourselves. So don't do that. Brick and mortar is the reality. Don't miss it. 90% of business for us comes from brick and mortar. 90% of front page news in Economic Times, Times of India, everywhere is only about online. So somewhere we have to converge. We can't be just sitting and thinking online, online and ignoring. Many of us are ignoring our brick and mortar business where you get 150% of our profits, 90% of business, thinking of 10% of online opportunity and where we probably get 500% of the losses. So just keep this in mind. This is the reality and that's the opportunity. Mega corporation is the reality. We spoke about this 10 years back. I think nobody even thought. Nobody ever believed. But that is the reality. Mega corporation retail is the reality. Go around the world. Last 100 years history, the top five companies in every country, there is a retailer. The top five richest person in every country, there's a retailer. It's becoming true here. It's already become true. So this is the reality. But does it mean that as small players, as small individuals, retailers, we will not win? Yes. So I'm saying mega corporation is the reality. Niche customer is the opportunity. There is a huge opportunity for small, small segments of retail, which is there. And I have a reason to say that. You can dream big. But can you suddenly say, I have 5,000 crore to invest? No. Because there's nobody willing to put 5,000 crores for your business when you start off with. So mega corporation is a reality. Niche retail business is the opportunity. Don't miss that. I mentioned booming consumption is a reality. Children, teens, senior citizen is the opportunity. Everybody's, because you need to look at India and Bharat and all in two ways. One is that 60% of population who we love but they're not employed, who will love, but they're poor, who will love, but their food consumption is also 180, 170 SKUs, which means they don't require a 5,000 square feet store in their place to actually survive. So reality is the 35% of our population. In that 35% of the population, I think we are missing a huge opportunity to serve the children, huge opportunity to serve the teens, and a bigger opportunity to serve the senior citizens because never it has happened that senior citizens. And when I senior, I'm saying also take 50, 55 plus, 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 where these are the people who are now got rid of all their responsibilities. Children are earning. Most of them don't want to stay with the parents. They already paid their EMIs, no more loans, and they have a lot of money to spend. So this is an opportunity, friends. Don't miss this. Poor unemployment is the reality. Let's not run away from that. But when poor and unemployment is the reality, 
Inclusion is the opportunity for this industry. This is the only industry which has 46 million people plus another 10 million, 15 million coming into delivery, the Swiggies and the Zomatos of the world. You can't miss this opportunity of inclusion. If we are not inclusive as an industry, if we don't decide to include the society and the community, then we are going to be failing in a very big duty. So just don't concentrate on the reality of unemployment, the reality of poor. Look at the opportunity that is sitting with us, which is inclusion. And I'm going to talk about inclusion after about 10 minutes about. Reality, startup for tech capital is the opportunity. Not much money coming into brick and mortar is the reality. Last time when you saw Go Colors, when public, everybody is talking about it. But two good things happened. One is got into niche. Second is investments happened in brick and mortar companies five years, seven years back. If the last two years, if anybody can count 10 retail brands, physical retailers who have got money, I would love to hear from that. So, so there is an opportunity, but this is the reality. Money is not chasing brick and mortar. So if you want to start a business which requires high capital, you have to look at a very different way and don't miss that. So therefore, what people are doing, in order to get capital, they want to become an omni player, a tech player, but without looking at the brick and mortar. Because all the omni player, all the D2C brand, the Mensas and the Goats of the world are wanting to eventually come to brick and mortar. So brick and mortar is going to be an opportunity from that point of view also for you when you actually want to grow. Big is the reality, and again and again mentioning it, please don't forget. But collaboration is the opportunity. And there are enough examples of collaboration that are happening today. And the reason I'm saying collaboration is the opportunity is a big can remain big, but hundreds of small can become bigger than the big. And that's the opportunity. Today you're looking at brick and mortar players getting into a player like a unicommerce or somebody, and actually suddenly your whole assortment gets 5x, 10x, 20x, 30x. So that's the opportunity. And all the opportunities I'm saying when you add up together, that's the future of retail. That's the future of all of us who are actually sitting here. Long-term business is the reality. Okay, everybody talks of long-term. But in today's world, I think you should look at business, not emotionally, but look at business rationally. And the opportunity is that you can create a business and sell it. And this, I think, is important because every Indian feels that No! You appreciate techies when they actually create value and valuation and sell the companies. But when it comes to brick and mortar and hard businesses, you say it's my family business, my family generation business. No! Create a business, do well. There's somebody, there's always a buyer for that business. So don't sit with that old time thinking because this is an opportunity. Okay, long term business is a past reality for us. Agility, nimbleness, innovation is the reality. Building inclusive business is the opportunity. Now, why I'm raising this? Because a lot of us always give examples of what we are not inside. You know, I, there was a time in Shopperstore about 10, 15 years back, we used to spend 25, 30, 40 percent of time discussing Reliance. Okay, not discussing our own business. So same thing today, everybody discusses online. Everybody wants to discuss Omnichannel. Are you discuss about your own business? And there you require to be agile. You talk about others' agility. Have you looked at your agility? Do you have an agility index? Do you know when you want to deliver and have you delivered that? I think these are questions that you have to ask for yourself. Expensive management is the reality. Today, salaries of a CEO, managing director, CXO, everybody is in dollar terms. Today, we are talking of unbelievable compensation, but that's the reality. There's a shortage of... Supply, the demand is much more. So everybody I meet, he says, you know, we are not able to hire people because they're expensive. I said, how much of shares have you given to them? No, no, we have not given any shares. So if expensive management is the reality, then wealth creation and ownership sharing is the opportunity. Don't you want to have 90% of a company which is worth 100 crores versus having 100% of the company with no management and you think it is worth 5,000 crores, in reality it is 10 crores. Ask this question. I think that's an important part. Ownership and wealth creation is important. And these are two different subjects. Don't mix it. When I say ownership, I'm talking of ownership where people feel they are owners, not necessarily shareholders. I was just talking to somebody and said, you know, all decisions, they come to me. Yeah, because you say, I'm the owner, I'm the owner, I'm the owner. If your CXOs were the owner, why would they come to you? Because you say, I'm the owner, I'm the shareholder, I need to do this. Take that away. And that, I think, is the biggest opportunity. 
new ways of doing business is the reality. And I think I have been talking about this. But upgrading our skills and mindset is the opportunity. When I'm saying upgrading our skills and mindset, I am referring to the entrepreneurs here, the CEOs here, the managing directors here, the owners here. Until we change, I change, or you change, you will not be able to participate in the future of retailing, which is going to be so much opportunity. And why I'm saying this? We as individuals have seen change, influenced change, participated in the change, and invested in the change in our families. Okay, anybody here has a feature phone? Not one. All of you have a smartphone? Huh? Raise your hands. 100%. So you're invested in technology to, for you to become smart. How many of your children are going and studying below the tree? Oh, you are invested in children, you want to send them all over the world. So you're invested in children. How many of your teens don't have a phone? Oh, you put money, you're invested in teens, technology. But when it comes to your own company, okay, you don't want to invest in technology, you don't want to encourage youngsters to come in, you don't want youngsters to influence. I meet a lot of second generation who say, daddy is not allowed to do this. Uncle is not allowing me to do this. Family is not allowing me to do this. So that is important. So no change will happen. No future will happen in this country for retailers, you and me, if I and you are not willing to change. I and you are not willing to become inclusive. I and you are not willing to become collaborative. And I and you are not looking at two parts of human being, the customers of ours and the employees of ours. To me, friends, that is the opportunity sitting in this country. And I don't think you will get this opportunity again. About 15 years or 18 years back, in one of the conferences, we had said the golden period of retail. And we saw that growing. I sense again it has come back. The next 10 years is the true golden period because a lot of, lot of opportunities are coming from the supply side, a lot of opportunities coming from the demand side. And the best is, the biggest investment that we require, technology, is almost coming free. There's a SaaS happening. And there are a lot of funded technology companies who want to support you and are willing to support you to actually grow. So ladies and gentlemen, that to me is the real opportunity and the real future of retail. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I was talking of... Uh... Sir, you're passionate about exclusivity. I know that. Over the years. Would you like to tell us something about exclusivity in retail? Well, it's not exclusivity, it is inclusivity. Oh, sorry, inclusivity, I'm so sorry. Yeah. It, is, it is inclusion. Sorry, inclusion in retail. Inclusion in retail, and I did mention about the inclusion uh, a little time before. Can you put the, uh, you know that we run a trust called Train, uh, which is actually a, a charitable trust we run for the betterment and improve the lives of people who work in retail. We do multiple things there, okay? Over the last 11 years, uh, you know, the Retail Employees Day, we've had 20 million people celebrating. The Train Awards has become global. Uh, you have multiple things that are happening. We have an app called Train Circle. We have 2 lakh members. We have an app which is meant for Kirana friends, to Kiranas to grow in life. All that is happening. But one thing which we are very proud of is a project called Punk, Wings of Destiny. This project in the last 10 years has killed 21,000 persons with disability and got jobs for 72% of them in retail. So 21,000 people are currently working in retail. But you know what is the sad part of it? The sad part of it is that out of the 21,000, okay, they're not even minuscule percentage. India has 26 million persons with disability as per census, but in reality, it is between 75 to 80 million. Retail has 46 million people who are employed. If retail can take even 1%, 2% of their employees and get them into the whole sector, this will be a huge change. And, and the change will be so immense because the customer is seeing the change. We have evidence to say, if you have two shops, one there is a person with disability, which must speech and hearing cashier, another one doesn't, the lady goes to this store and not this store because she says, this is an inclusive retailer, this is an inclusive community and we would like to work and actually shop with them. So this is a huge, huge, huge opportunity. And, and I think it is important for all of us to actually become inclusive towards that. I don't want to give a huge lecture on, on inclusion, but what I want to tell you is that the 80% of jobs in retail is front-end. And 
on the front end, the retail employees, especially persons with disability, whether the speech and hearing, orthopedic challenge, they do a fantastic job. They do a fantastic job. They're not educated because of family circumstances, okay? But the fact is, 8th pass, 10th pass, what you require is available there. There's an opportunity and there's a visibility for you. And like I said, customers prefer that. And that to me is again important because after all, we are working for the customer. There's a huge benefit of employing the persons with disability. I don't know whether you all really know about it. Low attrition, which is higher retention. Government refunds your provident fund, your contribution, which means you get a tax benefit of about 8%. If your employment cost is 5%, it's about 0.4% of, of your total cost, which is a large number because we don't even make that kind of profits. And they are an engaged workforce. When you get 5% of people with persons with disability, the 95% of the people actually become more sensitive. And just imagine what you're doing. You think that you're recruiting 5% people. No, you are actually sensitizing 95% of the people there. And of course, there's a brand value and a lot of things. We have a full deck made for inclusion, which I actually share with you. It's all about people, policy, processes, and practice. And it's not something very difficult to do. You can actually make your organization inclusive, provided you have decided as owners or whatever that I want to have an a inclusive organization by hiring people who come from as this kind of a background. Now, when I look at this, most of you must be thinking, what nonsense is he talking? I mean, how can we have persons with disability? What can they do about it? No, I'm not talking out of just nuts. I'm talking because we have people who have practiced this and who have done some amazing jobs. They have created inclusion in the last 10 years that I can't even talk about. So I'm not the right person to talk. So what I want to do is I want to call Rohan and Chitra on stage from Nexus and from Reliance. And I also have Gunender Kapoor from Vishal, who is actually here, or who's not here, but he's going to be there, and ask him to speak about what they have done. You'll be amazed at what a retailer can do by making his company inclusive. Can Chitra and you come up, please? Yeah, can you play the video? Dear friends, I'm Gunendra Kapoor and I'm the investor, CEO of Vishal Megamart Private Limited. Today, I wish to very briefly speak with you about the differently able people and our endeavor to create opportunities for them. This has been quite a passion with us uh, for some time now. As we speak in the recent past, we have employed as many as 1,250 different able people. About 20% of them are women. Sadly, they suffer mostly from visual, hearing, and polio related challenges. And I'm delighted to report that they do all kinds of roles in the company, across our offices, and almost all our stores. While they get some preference in terms of recruitment, our performance standards are exactly the same for everyone. On an average, I'm very happy to report that the performance of differently able people is better than the others. Whilst at the beginning, we had to convince our managers uh, to give opportunities to different able people. Today we, are, uh, today we are at a situation where most of our managers actually work very hard to attract different able people to their parts of the business. It has indeed been a wonderful experience for the entire company. As we look ahead, our aim in the next one year is to double the number of differently able people that we have in the company and therefore we are targeting to have close to 2,500 such colleagues in the company. Before I conclude, I wish to thank you for your patience. I would also like to take this opportunity to sincerely request you to give an opportunity to differently able people in your company, I think that one chance at self-respect and leading a life of dignity is something that they definitely deserve. That's, that's Gurinder Kapoor of, of Vishal Megamart. Just imagine 1250 employees from this kind of a workforce wanting to go to two and a half thousand 
beneficial both in terms of inclusion as well as in terms of business and commerce because they are better performing and their productivity is high. I have Chitra from the Reliance Group and I have Rohan from Nexus Malls who are also part of making their organization inclusive. And I thought I should ask them one or two questions because some of you must be thinking, this is a video which has come up, can we do some real life stories? Chitra, I want to come to you. You all started just maybe about eight, 10 years back. I remember when we actually started talking about the person with disability and you have taken such a lead. What makes you hire such people? I mean, what drives you from within organization, leadership, management, ownership to really get these people in? I think it's, yeah. Okay, I think it's uh, the basic thing really is my customers don't differentiate, right? Everybody can walk into my store and anybody can walk into my store. If I want to be inclusive, I have to have anybody and everybody serving my customers. And that's the absolute basic reason why we focus so much on inclusion. And uh, to your point on uh, inclusion of differently able, right? We are already at a 1% that you were talking about. We're trying to see how we can build it up. But I think that's, that's the reason that we do this. Because if I want my customer to trust me, if I want my customer to come and Yes, brick and mortar, because that's where we have a very strong presence today. But if I want my customer to walk into my store, and if I want my customer to feel comfortable in my store, then I have to also be inclusive. I have to show my, I, the customer has to feel that confidence. And that's really what, what kind of drives us to do this. Once we started doing it, the other side of the story is, and this is something that Nagesh has mentioned, many, many of these, in fact, most of them, it's, it's just the entry that you give them. They are so hardworking, and the retention is so high. From a performance perspective, like Guninder also said, we don't differentiate. Perform Once we've trained you, you're on the store, you're on the field, you do the job the way everybody else does. But the amount of dedication and the passion that we see, it's such a pleasure. And it's, it's an inspiration for many of our other colleagues as well, because people then start wanting to do better. So it helps us overall with the morale with, in that little ecosystem that they're working with. So it's kind of beneficial. So it's, it's a... It's a two-way relationship in that sense. It's a big win-win. Absolutely. Yeah? It's a huge win-win. Rohan, you run probably one of the largest uh, chain of malls, Nexus malls. What made you think of this? I remember I came to your conference room on, and uh, we were having tea and the lady who came and served the tea is uh, a punk graduate and uh, we were so impressed and we saw that bright shine in her eyes and uh, then somebody told, you know what, she's from the punk program, and she's been with us, and she's one of our best employees. But what drives Nexus Malls to become inclusive and hire so many of them? It, it makes business sense. Uh, uh, what you uh, mentioned on the screen, the benefits of having these people. Uh, so, so when we decided that how can we be more inclusive, and this is one of the initiatives we thought that we can do our bit, and at the same time, how it complements our business. So if, if you do something or if organizations, you know, want to do uh, this, these kind of initiatives, first you have to see that how it complements your business and what are the key factors. We first identified that, that what are the roles, how, uh, you know, we are going to, uh, you know, make our existing employee understand how we're going to change or tweak the processes. And once we did that, and once we had these kind of, uh, once we had, you know, these uh, PWDs, we were so amazed with their uh, efforts, their, uh, you know, wh what they could do. In fact, it makes more business sense to have more people in. And for this year, we have a target of two and a half of our workforce wow. will be from wow. this background. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. So when I, when I meet people like Guninder, Chitra, Rohan, and talk to so many of them, like I said, we have done 21,000, uh, created livelihoods for 21,000, but we are not the only ones. There are other NGO partners also who do, and I'm sure they also must have contributed. We must be having 75, 80,000, but this is still a very, very small number, very small number. And I was actually talking to Kumar, and, and I was saying, Kumar, uh, can we do something together? And I would like to call Kumar and Lawrence and Amisha on stage. Uh, and talk to Kumar about uh, something that we have done and we want to talk about it. But before that, I want to ask Kumar as to why did he agree when, when, when I said, hey, Kumar, can we make retail the more inclusive industry? Kumar. We spoke just a few days back, Kumar, and, and it's happening. 
So uh, yeah, he's been my boss for the longest time. Easy to sign up with him, right? <laughs> no, not really. I think I think I uh, the whole thought process of mine was because I believe that retailers are much more empathetic towards people who work with us. They are much more inclusive in their approach. You cannot be a retailer unless you are inclusive. Many a times your customers are not going to look the same. Our employees are not going to look the same. So it's only natural that we should take the benefit of having this natural tendency towards inclusivity. Uh, I want people here to raise their hands if you believe RA should do a formal tie-up with train to try and make sure that our industry is filled with people who can be supported. At the same time, people will support us. So raise your hands. Oh, so, oh. so thank you so much. This was in that trust that I, we did the sign up. The idea is that if there are two or three companies which are benefiting, can we make sure that every one of our retail association members get the benefit of this? My belief is that it not only makes the entire team working inside very empathetic towards what's happening, many a times customers look at this and correct me Chitra since you guys see this on the floor. When customers come in and see people with uh, disabilities, do they relate better to them? Or is the gali rate the same? So uh, there's a point Nagesh made earlier, right? If there are two cashiers and one has a special ability, very often customers are going to gravitate there because today there is more and more awareness even in society that inclusion is the way to go. So invariably there is an acceptance. Of, there, is, there is this appreciation that yes, we are willing to have all kinds of people, all walks of life, everything in the store. So we see a very positive uh, impact of that. So thank you. So my belief is that thanks to train, we should be able to, as an industry, get lots more of our assets, human assets coming in with better abilities and many a times to create the whole sensitivity in the whole company and the ecosystem. So thank you so much. I am in fact thankful that all of you supported this and I'm thankful for Mr. Nagesh to be the guiding force for this. Amisha, I just want to ask you a question. I know that you you worked with Nexus Malls and you created an exclusive batch for them, okay? And they took the whole batch across. So we also have done work where, where as partners together, okay, we have been create, able to create inclusivity within the organization. Could you just take 30 seconds on that as to what you did? So uh, Nexus Mall was very keen uh, that we participate and we ensure that the job role which we were currently doing for the Reliance and DMART was about customer facing. Whereas in a mall scenario, the job roles are completely different. So we mapped all the job roles that were existing in the malls and then created an exclusive batch. Curriculum was completely adapted to how a mall facility would work. And we trained all of our students to be able to uh, service the mall requirements. And that's how the whole batch got hired. In fact, I had just had a conversation with somebody here to say that if we have now started working with polyclinics and uh, microfinance institutes also who work in retail, and we are trying to tailor the curriculum according to the needs, which, which is probably different from a brick and mortar store. Ron, you want to say something on this project? So we were we are very excited. The first batch is through. Uh, like I said, our uh, targets are very ambitious, two and a half percent. And, uh, you know, the entire team is very excited to have Punk, to have uh, Rai on board. And uh, I think more, more batches, more the merrier. Yep, yep. Yeah, please help us. So, with that. so actually, Nexus is going to chase us because they have told us the requirements, and that's the team there who has to deliver. So, I think I can see them already getting stressed. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the last 10 years, we have skilled 21,000 such differently able people and we have set an objective as train to see if in the next 10 years we can go to a million such people and bring them into the retail industry. Now this, this kind of a thing cannot happen until unless the whole industry comes together. So I'm so happy to inform you that train and retail association of India has signed an MOU to work towards making retail industry inclusive. And I and we require a huge support from your side. So we are pledging for this, and I hope all of you will join on this pledge. Uh, all of you do know Dr. Lawrence Fernandez, who heads the membership initiative as well as the learning initiatives at REI. Uh, for details about how things will go ahead, I'm sure that Lawrence would be the person who will create the whole method yeah, to make it happen you. well. So. 
uh, i do wish the entire industry a lot of success on this so quickly i think uh, to sum it up uh, the way forward would be uh, there will be one side we will have the demand as in we will uh, get regular updates from the team on where these batches are happening in which locations maybe pin code wise and uh, on the other hand i will need your support as in to ensure that even before these batches are completed that we have placed these people can we have that yeah okay cool thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank you so much and looking forward to your cooperation thank you no yeah do the picture and then you can give the yeah yeah <laughs> Thank you. We'll ask Kumar and Amisha to give the inclusion certificate to. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for being. Thank you so much, Chitra. Thank you for all this. Come, Lawrence. Thank you. And I'll request Thank Mr. Kumar Rajagopalan to kindly present a memento to Mr. B. S. Nagesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>